Hello guys, today is the review of my Heiko FX AAA desoldering station. Um, we will review it by performing a few experiments, such as soldering high thermal mass components from a failed PC power supply and a failed UPS power board, and um, seeing how it performs. And um, just a quick note, today's video is scripted with a teleprompter, so let me know in the comments how you like this better than the original style. Alright, so um, first off, why don't we take a good start by taking a good look at the iron and going over the specifications. So it consists of three main parts, which would be the power unit right here, the, um, the iron, and the stand. So um, it uses, this is a ceramic heater. Um, Weller uses the nichrome ones, and the higher end ones are inductive heating, like the Metcals and the JBCs. So it's um, built very nicely, as we saw in that funny teardown. Um, the cord is very supple, um, excellent strain relief on all sides, and it heats up very fast. So, the, so as I have said before, it's a 70 watt iron, and it goes from 50 Celsius to 480 Celsius. In the US, it's roughly $100, United States dollars from authorized retailers for 120 volt version. And it frequently comes bundled with the um, CHP 170 cutters, which are quite nice as well. So this iron uses um, Heiko's T18 style tips, which I have one right here. Um, these tips, yeah, I don't think you can see it. These tips are, there are a lot of shapes, they're cheap, and they're widely available. So that's quite nice, plus the quality is pretty good, and they last quite long. Accessories wise, um, we have, this is the FX-0801, the standard iron. There's a FX-0804 hot tweezer. That's quite expensive, $200, double the price of the um, station. There's a manual feed iron for one-handed use, which I'm not sure how that costs, but I presume that can be cheap, as well as a nitrogen system, which is probably way too expensive for casual hobby use. Um, so basically, I just stick with this and maybe buy a used hot tweezer system, something like those cheap and Chinese rework stations. Alright, so those, um, yeah, I haven't really seen anyone use them. So let us go ahead and power up the iron. Alright. So I have it set for um, roughly 290 Celsius, uh, basically 550 Fahrenheit. I prefer to use Celsius, but this displays in Fahrenheit. And um, let's begin by looking at the interface and how do we change the temperature. So as you've probably noticed, there's only two buttons on here. Let's take, a, let's take a closer look at it. There are only two buttons, up and enter. So you might be wondering, how do we change the temperature on this iron? All right, so let's wait for it to get up to temperature first. Um, I find the temperature changing really quite unintuitive. So you have to press enter for two seconds. And then for example, we can select the value of this one. Let's say we want to go to 600. Enter. Enter. Let's say, yeah, 600. And then it raises the temperature up to 600. Um, I don't particularly like this and I would have much preferred a three button system like the more expensive uh, 951 I believe it is which um, you press, there's up, down, and enter, That I feel that would make it a lot more intuitive. It also comes with a nifty preset feature, so I believe you enter that just by pressing up. Let's see if I'm correct there. Um, I don't think so. So I, I, I forgot exactly how you do the preset feature, but um, this iron comes with multiple presets at like 750 and then 850, 650. Um, this is not something, the iron's not very intuitive to use, so, so you'll have to peruse through the manual after you receive it, which I find a little bit ridiculous since it's a soldering iron. It's not some whiz-bang consumer gadget that you have to read the manual to get every feature. Um, there's a password lock as well, and I don't like the way that works either, mainly because of the restrictions of two buttons. And I don't think us hobbyists would really use it, so I won't um, spend my time going into that. Alright, so let it, let's just continue to the experiments that I have planned for today. Alright, so um, I have set the iron to 550, 
and um, we are going to start off by solder by trying to solder this very large wire right here. It's a connector, and um, I have the iron set to what I normally have it at 550 degrees, and I have fit it with a um, with a massive 3.2 millimeter chisel tip, and we're going to see how much time is needed to fully melt the solder. We should start at the temperature I normally put the tip at, as I've said, 550 Fahrenheit, 290 Celsius. And if we need to, we're going to work upwards from there. So I'm going to just first, first off coat the tip with a layer of solder. Um, I'm using MG Chemicals 6040 Rosin Activated. It's a 23 gauge, 0 0.025 inches. Um, so there it is. Um, in, in things like this, solder is a very important part. Uh, many people don't recognize the importance of buying good solder. They think, oh, as long as you have a good iron, I can throw whatever crap at it and it'll work. But um, it's actually very important, um, just so that's one place you should not cheap out on. Alright, so let's um, coat the tip with a little bit of fresh coat. Alright, so uh, wipe off a little. Okay, so um, the tip's nice, the tip is all nice and clean now. And um, let's just put, put this on and see how long it takes. Wow, that was fast. Um, let's, okay, so I think um, we're, we're gonna move on to a ground plane next. And then we'll move on to a large heat sink from a um, UPS board. So this wire melted no problems at all and quite quickly, so let's move on. The large ground planes are right here. Um, for example, let's take this one. And, um, oh, I'm sorry, you can't see that. So for the large ground planes, let's just take um, one of these right here. And we'll go ahead and give it a go. So I still have some solder on the tip. Let's just put it on. See how long it takes to melt. Well, this one's fully melted already. And um, yeah, this one's fully melted. So these were both quite fast. So now let's try with the really difficult component. Let's move this board out of the way. And this board. We have these two massive aluminum blocks directly soldered to the PCB on a plane as well. So um, let us attempt to so let us attempt to go attempt this right here. All right. Okay, so um, I think for this one let's just coat the tip with solder as we always should. And then let's go. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah, this this one's it's straining to melt this one. Let me see. Um, let's put some more on. Yep, yep, we got it. Okay, so um, it took some time. There also there's another one of those very large connectors over here. We can do that if we want to. I think this one might actually have a higher thermal mass than those. No. Yeah. Alrighty, so um, during all of these experiments, um, we've seen that this iron can handle most of the daily soldering tasks you'll need. Um, if, you're, if you're gonna do the large thermal mass components on a regular basis, you'd probably want to get one of those high thermal mass irons like um, Dave's JBC or use Metcal from eBay. And um, we can, from this we can tell that basically anything you're gonna throw at it on a day-to-day -day basis should handle just fine, no problems. And um, this iron in the mid, I think, is a winner. It's, uh, it's relatively low cost at $100, so it's excellent bang for your buck. And I think it's an all-around an excellent station. However, if you're able to spend more, like let's say greater than $200, or you live in a region where 220 volt power is used, then this might not be your best choice. Um, Heiko distributors, they charge double, triple the cost of this, I mean, in a, for the 220 volt version. So you might want to look for other higher end stations if you're going to pay this much. Uh, something like the um, Ursa Icon Nano. That's around 200, maybe 225 US dollars. 
or um, for a little bit more, the JVC compact iron, such as Dave has. And um, on eBay, uh, many, many used Metcal stations are there. So those are highly regarded as well. However, when purchasing the Metcal, um, be careful as temperature control on most of those stations, such, such as the MX500, is um, done by swapping out the tips. And Metcal tips are not cheap. I think they're at least $15, $30 on that. I may be wrong, so don't quote me. So um, yeah, I mean, if if you're in the mid range, if you're in the mid range area, looking for a good station, and you live in the U.S., I think this would be a prime contender. All right, thank you very much, and if you like this video, please subscribe. Bye bye.